Did you try to stop the search? No. Why is that? Well, I'd say I was afraid to, but that's not exactly the way. I mean, that's, it's not that I was quaking in my shoes. The, I, was, I felt that I couldn't stop them from doing what they were doing, that they were going to go ahead and do it no matter what I did. They were intent. Their questions, the questions from Sergeant Andrak and, pardon me, Sergeant Hayward and the other officers at the scene indicated that they believed that uh, I was involved in some sort of activity and they were hostile about it. The questions seemed hostile to me. Indicated to me that they were going to do damn well what they pleased, and I did not. I, you didn't see any point. There was no point. I, I didn't see how the heck I could stop a half a dozen uniformed armed officers from searching my car. They didn't ask you for your consent. No. Objection to Brock. <clears throat> Let me ask you, Seafield. Do you have anything else? I think that about covers it. All right, look for the question. Mr. McKeever. Thank you, Judge. Just a couple of things. That's not the first thing you told Hayward, though, when he asked you what you were doing in the neighborhood, did he? What? Excuse me? He asked you what you were doing in the neighborhood, and you didn't tell him right off what you were doing in the neighborhood, did you? I told him what, I, I responded to his question. I understand. What was that response? As I recall, the response, I don't know when it occurred, uh, was that I had been in the neighborhood to uh, drive and move. Good one. I said uh, my response to him was that I had been in the vicinity at a drive and move. And you told him the name of that movie, didn't you? Yes, I did. But you hadn't been to that movie, had you? Your Honor, I, I, I don't think this is relevant. I'm going to let him manage. I don't think it's material to the issue. Well, the question of credibility is always material, and these are questions that the court would be. I'll let him in. No, I have Well, you started off with a lie to him. And you followed that up. Let me see if I understand your testimony correctly. You followed that up with another story, didn't you? You know, I object. But restate the question. Well, did you tell Hayward anything else after you told him that you'd been at the drive-in movie? You do recall your testimony during the courtroom proceedings in Utah, do you not? I'm not sure what you're referring to. I think you, I mean, really, it's a broad question. If you try to be more specific, I can help you out. Do you recall your testimony in Utah? I recall testifying in Utah. Do you, do you recall, you recall the drive-in movie story you told Hayward? You've already testified to that. Yes, sir. Do you recall the marijuana store. You know, I object to the other story. I'm going to rule it. Uh, there's some reference to it in the opinion. Judge, excuse me, but I, this guy hasn't been talked about by either the officers at this hearing or by the testimony of the judge. He's on cross examination in the defense. We got a direct pinpoint question of issue of fact that the court has to. And that's, I think about it, question over and you may proceed. Do you need me to freshen up your memory a little bit, Mr. Bundy? I think if you could read them, ask me the question again, I'm not sure what you're asking, but I can try to I'm asking you to it. kind of an initial question, and I don't mean to be confusing. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you recall your testimony in Utah? If you don't, say so, and I'll try to refresh you. Well, if you could give me a specific question, I don't think it would be, it would be difficult for me to sit here and quote you verbatim what my okay. testimony was in Utah. I understand. I can appreciate that. Let me see if this refreshes your mind. Do you recall testifying that on the evening in question you were eating dinner and watching television until 12 midnight or 12.30, which time you decided to visit a friend? That upon arriving at that friend's house, you noticed the lights were out, you decided not to waken her up, and you proceeded to drive around for a while. You ended up in the Granger area where you decided to smoke some dope. Your Honor, excuse me, but if he's going to excuse, if he's going to ask me a question, I will object to the summarization of the entire line of questioning. He's going to ask me a well, question. Well, if I've if I sufficiently refreshed your memory, say so, and I'll stop. 
You want to tell us about that testimony? Do you recall that, Mr. Do I recall the testimony? You apparently do. You just told the court there was lengthy questions and answers about that point. All I'm saying is that I, I don't recall the testimony specifically, but I can say that in general that I, that I can uh, associate what you're saying with the trial in Utah. Okay. Specifically, do you recall telling the court in Utah that you fled from the officer in order to get the smoke out of your car and that you threw the marijuana out the window during the chase? Yes. Now, back to this case. Isn't it a fact that you've done all of the research on this particular motion? Yes, such as it is. <laughs> yes, I have. Have you found some cases on the point? I found too many cases. And the point we're talking about is consent to search, isn't it? That's one of the points we're talking about. Are you familiar with what the factual basis would need to be for a consent search to be thrown out? Yes, I'm familiar with it. I am now. I wasn't then. That hasn't colored your testimony a bit. I think you'll find, well, no it hasn't. And I think you'll find, if you review my testimony in the suppression hearing in Utah, that it's essentially the same. That's all I have, Jack. Any right? Do you have anything for Mr. Clinton? No, sir, I don't. Uh, you may step in. Any further testimony on the motion? I feel like I need to call Officer Hayward just briefly, Judge. All right. Well, Officer Hayward. Hayward uh, Sergeant, I guess he is now. Witness no, sir. Step out of the witness stand, sir, and be seated. No, previously sworn, Sergeant. The oath is still applicable. You may proceed, Mr. Thank you, Judge. Sergeant, are you familiar with the smell, the odor of marijuana? Yes, sir. How long have you uh, had some experience in this odor? I had uh, three years just prior to this date of alcohol and drug uh, enforcement uh, drug uh, drivers in the state of Utah. During the time you were in Mr. Bundy's car on this particular evening, at any time did you smell the odor of marijuana? No, sir, I did not. At any point during your search in the car or around the car, uh, trunk, engine, whatever, did you find any substance that resembled marijuana? No, I did not. At any time during your chase of Mr. Bundy, did you see anything thrown out of the car? No, I did not. That's all I have. And redirect? A re a cross, excuse me. Yeah, we, we approach the bench. Yes, sir. Mark his report on your 
we've marked the report. This one. This is uh, Just asking if that's the full report and if it's accurate. Sergeant Hayward, I'm showing you a document list marked as defendants. Post exhibit A1 identification. I ask you to identify that, please. Incident report of the the stop that occurred on August the 16th, 1978. Yes. Good offer this in the evidence. Be received without objection, out of order. Objection. Okay. That's all I have. Sergeant Hayward, now be excused. Yes, sir. Thank you for your good sir. Defense have anything further on the motion? Nothing further, Your Honor. State have any other rebuttal? No, sir. Right. Motion's closed. And gentlemen, I'm going to take argument on both of the motions to suppress. Uh, in either procedure that you want to go by, you may take the state uh, to argue first. Go ahead. Judge, 